Hello Tutoring Bee fans. Today I'm going to show you how to multiply and divide using larger numbers. So I have an example on uh, my paper here, 12,000 times 500. Um, so a lot of times when I have students who are just learning how to multiply or they've learned their basic multiplication facts and then they start to get to these larger numbers, they kind of freak out a little bit and, and go, oh, I don't know how to do that because they're such big numbers. But really, it's not that that difficult. I show them just an easy, quick little trick and uh, everybody always really loves it and it's a lot faster, easier method. Um, so first I'm gonna start, before we answer this problem up here, I'm gonna start off with some basics. So let's just start with one times five. We know that that's five. If I start wanting to multiply times multiples of 10, so for example, if I wanted to do one times 50, this is basically the same problem because I can just cover up that zero and still do one times five and then however many zeros is in my original problem, I tack on to the end of that number and that becomes my answer. So one times 50 is 50. Of course, we know one times any number is just that same number. So let me give you a little bit different example. <clears throat> How about three times 50? Works the same way. I can just cover up that zero. It, I do 3 times 5, which is 15, and then I've got a 0 right there, so I just tack on another 0 right there. So my answer is 150. And it works with all the multiples of 100, multiples of 1,000, multiples of 10,000, and so on. So this would be 15 with two zeros at the end, okay? Even if I do this cover up all of the zeros in my problem. So I want to do three times five, which is still 15. And then in my problem, I have one, two, three zeros, one, two, three zeros in my answer. So I come up with 15,000. Don't get confused by products that have a zero at the end. So for example, four, 40 times 500, if I use my, my little trick, I do four times five, that equals 20. A lot of times this zero right here will get uh, students a little bit confused. You still, this is still your, your main product for four times five. And then you still have one, two, three zeros to add on to the end of that number. So don't let them get confused with that. Same thing, I mean, we can do this with much larger numbers and it's still four times five is 20 so that's our base of it and then we've got one two three four five one two three four five and then i always tell my students go in after you have everything written out and put in your comments because a lot of times they'll want to you know put those commas in as they're writing them but um, it's a lot easier if you wait till the end Okay, so now let's go back to our original problem that I have written up here. Now that I've shown you this neat little trick, it's not so difficult. I can see that my significant numbers, significant numbers are just any number that is not a zero in a problem. So my significant numbers are 12 and five. 12 times five is 60. And then I've got one, two, three, four, five zeros. One, two, three, four, five zeros. And then I stick in my commas afterwards, so I come up with six million. Okay, I'm also gonna show you how to do this same trick with division. With division, it pretty much works the same way. You want to use those significant numbers. So let's start off with an easy one, four divided by two. Well, that's two. If I have 40 divided by two, I still am just looking at my significant number. So four divided by two is still two. And then I've got that zero on the end. It's really important to, to ask yourself, does my answer make sense? When you're trying these little shortcuts or tricks, you always wanna look at your answer and say, okay, is this a reasonable answer for 40 being divided into two separate groups? Well, 20 makes sense in this case. Same thing with 400. 
I'm just going to look at uh, my significant numbers. 4 divided by 2 is 2. I've got two zeros in my problem, so I stick two zeros on the end. Okay? What if we have something like this? Um, I can actually cancel out some of these zeros. So when you're dividing, if you've got any zeros in this second portion, the divisor, you can actually cancel out a zero from this first number right here as well. So then you can see that this problem is now turned into what we had up here. So now we just have 40 divided by 2. 4 divided by 2 is 2 and then we've got a zero right there. If I have a larger number, again, one of these zeros cancels out with one of these zeros. So now I have 400 divided by 2. I do 4 divided by 2, which is 2, and then I've got two numbers at the end there. Let's say we have uh, 27,000 divided by 300. Okay, um, I've got two zeros here in this number in the divisor. I'm going to take two zeros away from the dividend, and then that means that I'm left with one zero here, but my significant numbers are 27 and 3. Okay, so I'm just going to ignore all of this, and then I've got 27 divided by 3, which is 9, and then I've got that zero right there, so my answer is 90. So there you go. I hope that helps some of you with your multiplication and division of those larger numbers. Um, remember to always ask yourself, does my answer make sense? Please uh, comment below and um, let me know uh, how you like this video and if there's anything else that you would like to see. And check out my site as well, mytutoringbee.com. Thanks. Bye.